Right, there have been a lot of questions about uh, visible lines that are going across the print parallel with the build plate. What I'm going to now is try and explain how that works or why you're getting those, those lines. Um, quite simply, it is down to the way that the Photon and all other DLP printers um, build their build their images and build their layers. Basically, what it is is you're working with a with a grid pattern in both the horizontal as well as the vertical plane. Now, what I mean with that is is that we all know that a 3D printer builds lay builds items up in layers like this and the finer the layers the more uh, the, 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 the cleaner the print gets so as a, you, you've got you, know, you put lots of layers together like that you'll get a you get a neat print however if you do the same with a uh, with a with a larger uh, with a larger step you'll get chunkier print. Now with machines like um, uh, like the, the, the Form 2 or the Formlabs laser uh, SLA printers and the uh, and any um, X, Y, Z um, uh, FDM printers they all work with um, Cartesian vectors so they'll trace a line uh, using uh, uh, in, in, the, in the in the case of the form labs machines they'll use galva uh, galvanomet galvanometers well, um, galvos to bounce a light uh, laser beam around whereas um, machines like the Ultimaker 2 and uh, the the Prusa Mark 3 they use stepper motors with very fine resolution to create those lines um, if you look closely at some prints on uh, FDM machines they will also have the same issue as I'm about to explain uh, that you get with with these with these types of machines. Now, their resolution um, on the X and Y is down uh, down to the precision of the stepper motors, which can be very very fine. Whereas on the uh, on the on the photon on DLP machines, you're limited to the size of the raster that is created by the LCD screen, which in this case shall be represented by my son's Duplo blocks. Now this will represent a pixel. If you're looking at a printer that uses an LCD screen to mask the area that it's printing. What it wants to pr print, it'll leave uh, transparent. What you want to don't want to print, it'll mask. So that means, because it's an LCD screen, it has a number of pixels that way and a number of pixels that way, and that has influence on what you're trying to do. See, so with the uh, FDM machines, you can get a bit of a higher resolution, um, but not necessarily so with with FDM machines. I mean, uh, 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 DLP machines. Because let's say this 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 cable is the shape you want to make, and what the slicer is going to do, it has to has to make that shape out of the squares available to it. That means that to create this, it'll have to put uh, open up these squares here. See that has already moved that aside. So there, that will have to go there. This one has to go here. This can go there. This goes here. We see here's the problem. I'm already doing it wrong. It can't do that because you have these squares. You can only use the squares available to you. So instead of going there, you go there. And you go there. And this will go have to go here. It'll have to make compromises to where you can put those pixels. So this can't go here because it's overlapping so it'll have to go here. This one can't go here so it'll have to go here. 
that can't go there, so this will have to go here. That'll go there. Can't go there, so here. And then finally, that goes there. That is your shape. On a very small scale, using uh, the, the shapes available to it. So you, you can't do a half step yet. That is going to be, that's worked on with anti-aliasing, which is an entirely different story altogether. So that is what causes, in the vertical plane, weird shapes. Because, as you go along, uh, I'll just substitute these with these. You might notice this on uh, on the build, uh, on, the, on the supports, the vertical uh, sections of the supports. So as you go up and up and up, these lines will repeat. So that means if there's a very subtle curve in what you're building, and you have that just pointing straight up from the build plate, you'll get these lines repeated all the way up. So anything you have parallel to the X and Y will end up repeating these patterns all the way up. So that's why you get vertical artifacting. And you can you can remedy that by rotating your object so that there's no parallel line there's no lines parallel to the X and Y. But we're not fully there though. Because a lot of people are wor worrying about the Z wobble on their printers when they shouldn't be. They're going, right, uh, every so many at every x amount of height there's a line now it's recommended that if you print an object um, to lessen the uh, footprint on the bed you print it not vertical or not not flat like this but at an angle that has all sorts of um, uh, influence on the uh, on the way the, the part adheres to the bed and Especially if it's hollow, it just it 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 makes it um, easier to remove from the build plate. I mean, from the bottom of the tank. Anyway, so what you're doing is you want to make sure that when you're putting your layers down, that you want to stick to a angle that is that has the shortest point to point distance between edges of the layers. So let's say this we're, we're building a, a, a thing at this angle. The best angle for this, the closest points you can get are here, 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 and here. You can't get closer than that without creating a, uh, a, a visible step. You can't go lower than that because then you'll create a visible step in that direction. So let me demonstrate. If you're gonna say, if you're gonna go steeper than this, you'll end up creating this, where you get steps further apart. The further apart these steps are, the more visible this line will be. Um, if there's a, a gentle curve on it, it'll be even worse at some point. But then you also hear, well, printed at 45 degrees. Well, okay. This, we will say that this is our um, 0 0.05. The pixel size, 0, 0.0, uh, yeah, 0 0.05. 0 0.05, uh, 50 microns. The size of the pixel itself is 47 microns, or 47.25, very small. But the, the 0 0.05 and 0 0.04, 5, 7, of the bed at 45 degrees will get a, a near enough um, uh, good enough result because these picks these points are very close together you know? however if you're printing something at uh, half that height let's say 0 0.02 or 0 0.03 let's say these are 0 0.03 layers again this angle to get this these closest uh, together tangentially means you have to pick an angle that these are equidistant 
or as close as possible throughout the entire build. So that means if you're trying to print this at 45 degrees, so let's say this is our 45 degrees here, that means that to get there, you'll end up over here. To get that one, you'll end up over there. So, um, am I doing that right? Yeah. So it means you'll, you'll end up with bigger steps between these layers and you'll get those more visible lines. It sort of negates using this resolution if you're going to be printing it at an angle that it's not optimized for. It gets even worse if you're going at a, at a, at a even more vertical angle. Because uh, in fact, see that is that height that ends up getting even further apart. And if you go even more vertical, so each two of these is one of those. So if you go even more like that, uh, you again, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven layers, and you'll get that step because you can't get these closer together. If you could. You'd be printing more like this. And then that that will end up getting you know, that that step is then less noticeable. But because you're limited to the size of the pixel versus the size the height of your layer, you've got to make sure that when you do print, you have to find uh, an angle that is optimal for the height you're printing at. So when someone says print at a 45 degree angle, that's great if you're doing a 0 0.05 layer, because that, that's then very close to the size of the pixel itself. However, that doesn't work for anything above or below that height. You have to print at an angle that works for that layer, to, so that you, you're not, not going to get those steps. Because what I said earlier about the, um, about the uh, circle is e it applies equally to this as well. Just have to look at it at a different um, different angle. So, let's say um, you're building something in a curve, or at anyone who's been to Legoland or been to the Lego store will notice that any of their big displays, the big creatures, or they're like big Darth Vader's, or the big Boba Fett's, or uh, any, any of the Lego movie characters, they'll see that when they build them out of uh, out of blocks, you can't create a proper curve. So what I've got here is an approximation of a curve using squares in this direction and the layers in that direction. Now. If you understand how this thing works, how it builds its layers, you'll have a better understanding on how to orient your part, make sure that your um, your print uh, is positioned the best compromise, because not, not all angles will be the same, the best compromise for how you want your detail to come out and how you want your uh, layers to be hidden. Because it doesn't work just in this direction, it works in two directions. Um, so let's say you've got a 0 0.05 mil or 0.5 mil um, build. So there's your pixels. I think I said 0 0.05 earlier. It's been a very long day. So forget I said that. It's 50 microns will have a 45 degree angle, more or less. So what I'm doing here is using the pixels the best advantage by uh, angling a part in two directions to create the shortest direction distance between all of these points. So that is what's happening in your print. If you put it too far in that direction, this happens. Go that 
way, that way, that way. Oh, and I've run out of run out of Lego. Let's just keep going over there. Actually, that should be over here. Should it be? Going two there, two there, two there, and what you end up getting. here. What you end up getting is a very visible line or more visible line along here and visible steps along here. So that's the corner of something. That'll end up oops, looking like this. So then that line will then become visible along this direction. Uh, it's, that's it, you've got you to find a compromise. I made a chart earlier, uh, a few weeks ago, and posted it. I'll put a link to it uh, below this video in the first comment. And hopefully that'll, hopefully this will help you understand what is going on with your print in both the X and Y direction as well as the Z direction and how that you have to bear in mind that your print is limited by the size of the pixels in relation to the height of your layers. And I hope this, is, um, this has helped somewhat, albeit uh, in, it's late, at n it's, it's been a long day, it's late, and uh, I've been a bit rambly, but hopefully this will help you understand how to angle your prints to the best of your abilities and how to understand what's going on when you get weird lines in places you didn't expect them.